Hey everybody, welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm your boy Abram, and I just finished playing a couple hours of the Splatoon 3 Splatfest world premiere demo, and I've got some thoughts on the game, but not a whole ton, and here's why. Recently, Tucker and I sat down to really discuss the game proper, in full, after the direct with our good friend Botox Media, and that discussion, which I believe is like 45 minutes, is over on his channel, so I'll leave a card in the corner for you to go check out if you're so inclined. But to just catch up to speed, the super fast TLDR is I'm quite pleased with Splatoon 3. It's very iterative, but ultimately, it's a refinement on this gameplay formula that I love, and it's another reason to jump back into this world with, you know, the spirit of events and people running around leaving messages in, the, in a hub world again, right, and constantly playing this online with everybody. Splatoon is a cultural entity, and it's been gone for like two years, so just having it back is great. Besides, it really seemed like based off of that direct that this was not only Splatoon again, but it was Splatoon refined, and having played the Splatfest, that's pretty much true. Now, ultimately, there was a lot of stuff you can't do in the Splatfest, obviously. You can't really upgrade gear, you can't explore a lot of the systems, you can't play the little top-down card game, right? The, the sort of Gwent equivalent. A lot of this stuff, it wasn't there, so I can't talk about it, but what I can say is that the changes I could experience just made the Splatoon experience I love a little bit smoother and a little bit better. Now, the obvious first big thing that you notice in the context of this is that walking around this hub is fucking awesome. The hubs in the past games, they've been fine, but they've been small. And it's felt like here's like the main corridor of a town and sort of the, the shops off the side and things. But this, it's mostly window dressing, but you can walk around a little bit more and just seeing it populated with NPCs and the crazy, you know, Splatfest decorations all over the place and reading people's messages again. It's a whole hell of a lot of fun. So that was really great off the bat. A little bit of a free rate drop here and there. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. But the actual experience, you know, of just being there, a little technical hiccup aside, was quite wonderful. But really, what you're doing is you're picking your team. I picked Scissors, shout out to Big Man, and then I walked right into the gates, into the lobby, and that's kind of one of the major changes, right? We have a proper lobby now, and I think the lobby is really, really great. I like sort of fucking around in that area as I'm waiting for matches. Took a long time to find matches, I will say, but I'm hoping that's just sort of a, a Splatfest, another hiccup that's going to be ironed out when we actually get the game in a couple weeks. But the lobby system is pretty cool. But then you get into a match, and you notice the next big change, which of course is the new spawn system where you can kind of pick, pick your spawn point. And I like this a lot. I think it's going to help with the sort of issue of one-sided rolling matches where you just get pushed back to your spawn and you're kind of stuck. Um, you don't have a ton of room as to where you're going to shoot out to, but you got enough to where I think you can be flexible and find a good spawn point. And just sort of fight people back who are trying to literally push you into the spawn and shooting at your spawn. It, it could get kind of annoying. I will say, a lot of rolling matches here. We got rolled a whole hell of a lot. Because here's the deal, there's the people like me who really love to play Splatoon. But then there are the Splatoon players, and there were a lot of Splatoon players out in full force, clearly just using the weapons that they've been using for thousands of hours in Splatoon 2, and that was kind of imbalanced. But I, I think once everybody's back on that sort of equal playing field and there's, you know, more actual newbies, it's like there's mostly veterans returning here, not every match will be an absolute sweat fest, like it is in my room right now because I had to turn off my fan to record this video. I digress. Point is, I like this new spawn system. The, the new maps, I kind of couldn't get a great feel for. They seem kind of basic. Um, it's also kind of hard to tell because this might be a hot take, but I'm not crazy about the in-battle Splatfest aesthetic. I like the daytime. I like the, all the, you know, the, the bloom lighting, the god rays, and seeing the sun reflecting off the ink, and you can't really do that when it's nighttime in all the arenas, right? So, I don't know. I get that it makes sense, like for one night a month or whatever, but this is my first time seeing Splatoon 3. I want to kind of soak in your new maps with the nice daytime lighting. I couldn't do that, but the maps seemed fine. And I did like the rework of the museum stage. I think that's quite cool. Um, speaking of quite cool, again, there's not a whole hell of a lot to talk about in terms of the actual Turf War mechanics. It's like, it's Turf War. I've been playing Turf War since 2015. I love it then. I love it now. I think it's just Brown's right line, which is fun. You cover the ground, you're shooting the people. You know it, right? So I'm not going to cover it more. But what I will cover briefly before we get the hell out of here are the new weapons and, and things like that. So you got two new main weapons. You got the Splatana, you got the, the Tri-Stringer. I didn't really like either of them. If, I, if I'm going for a, a sort of a quote-unquote brush type weapon, I want this one right here. I want my ink brush, and I actually use a lot of it. Or I guess, sorry, this is the Octobrush, not the ink brush. Sorry, I know the difference. Don't, don't comment. 
Um, but this baton is a little bit too PvP focused, you can't really cover a whole, hell, a whole hell of a lot of ground with it. So, mm, it didn't really do too much for me. Um, and the Tri Stringer is kind of in a similar position to where I think it's a really, really clever weapon. Basically, you, it, you fire your regular shot, right? But you also fire these extra projectiles that land and then detonate later. And based on how long you charge for, you can kind of like change the the sort of spread of your of your of your projectiles and it seems like this is a lot of nuance here really deep and interesting and you you, you kind of hang back and you, and you pick your shots and things it's not how I play Splatoon I want to be I want to be slashing with my with my octo brush or using a really fast weapon um so this wasn't really my vibe but it's a really great addition um but because those really didn't speak to me what I was focusing more on were the new subs and specials and I think they're of varying qualities. What's very clear, I think, about everything new in this game, including the new movement tech of like this sort of jump to the side, jump to the side, jump behind technique, um, is very clearly tailored for more competitive play. To where like that new movement tech, I basically never used. Uh, I don't think I really saw anybody using it, frankly. I think it's gonna be the thing once we've played more of the game, played that campaign, and you get a feel for it more, we'll use it a little bit more, but really it seems like a lot of stuff is tailored for people doing anarchy battle. Um, so when, when I get an ability, it's like, it, it's called like, it's called like the linear shot, or I don't remember what it is, but it's like, it's a, it's a sub where you, you shoot the thing and it goes, swing, and it like will mark people in its path. In Turf War, Chaos, you don't really know that kind of strategy, so some of these items kind of went over my head. I like a little bit of competitive Splatoon, but I top out like S rank, so I'm nowhere near the, the expert on these things. So I'll defer to my friends like Lewis Parker, who are like, mad insane at the game, uh, who can really dive into those mechanics and tell you if these things are good or not, but what I can say is not all of them spoke to me. One that I did find interesting, and I'm kind of on the fence about it, it's called the Fizzy Bomb. Um, th the main cool thing about it is it lets you make Fizzy Bomb, Cherry Bomb jokes to yourself in the dark as you play in the Splatoon 3 Splatfest, or so I've found out firsthand. Uh, but it's cool, it's basically a, a bomb, I'll use this Nintendo New York water bottle as an example, and you, you can shake it up. And, if, and when you shake it up and then you throw it, it basically makes like a like a chain reaction of explosion that goes explode, explode, explode. And I think it's pretty neat. Um, but ultimately, a lot of the subs, again, situational, competitive, or not really what I'm there for. What I was really compelled by are the new specials. And again, some of them are super competitive, more like support type things, but three really stuck out to me. The first is the sort of the crab roller. Now the crab roller, I was, I don't know if I'm disappointed by it, but like, it looks so cute and fun to use in the trailers, and actually experiencing it, I can't figure out what to do with it, to be honest with you. I could not get a single kill with it, no matter how much I tried. Basically, my only utility for it was if I was getting attack, and I would use it as basically an overshield, pop it, try to shoot them, but really, just let that soak up the damage so I don't die. That seemed what mo like what most people are doing with it. It's kind, of, it's kind of easy to kill somebody out of it, frankly, so it seems like it needs a buff. But the two other ones that are really cool, and I don't remember the hand of this, the hand. I don't remember the name of this next one, but it is that sticky hand where you can do like, sh again, swing, uh, and you can stick to the wall and pull yourself over. You remember those little like jelly rubber hands you had as a kid? It's basically that. What's fun about this is you can use it basically to get yourself somewhere you're not supposed to be, take out a guy who's sniping or something, and then hop back. So it's 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 tr traversal and utility, but really it's for. Hey, that guy's annoying and I can't reach him, there's no wall I can traverse it up to him. I'm gonna go run it really deep, take him out, and get flung back. So, a little bit of a search and destroy, I like that quite a bit. Um, but the one that I love is the one that's called the Reef Slider. You hop on your little shark, your shark shoots ahead, and then it does the Akira stop and explodes. It's very simple, and it's, it's fun because it's powerful, but it's not overpowered. You basically don't really have a lot of extra armor or invincibility frames here. So you gotta be smart, but when you use it, it's very tactical, it's very cool. I like that one a lot. But really, messing with these new weapons and things were, were the main thrust of my gameplay here. I, I customized my little splat card. There were really no emotes to unlock. There was not a whole hell of a lot to do other than just play Turf War. So ultimately, my thoughts are basically that. It's more Splatoon, it's Turf War, I love that. I think the new weapons and gear are pretty interesting, but that's about all I can say based on this. Where's my hype level compared to before I played? Well, I would say it's it's basically the same, because I knew what I was getting out of this game, right? I was getting more of what is maybe my favorite Nintendo IP. 
So I remain very excited for Splatoon 3, although it's an excitement predicated on the fact that I just want to be back in this world, you know, playing with everybody and, and seeing the new updates and new maps and jumping in for a couple matches before class and when I get home at night, like, that's what I want. And playing this reminded me that we're only a couple weeks away from this being my staple game again, right? So that's why this was so fun to me. But not necessarily because I was like, oh shit, I can't wait to use these new weapons and everything, because frankly, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what's a weapon I know from past games that has Reef Slider and a Splat Bomb. And whatever that intersection is, it's gonna be what I use most, but I also did enjoy using the brush quite a bit, so I'll probably jump between familiar things in a very familiar game, but ultimately, I just love Splatoon. Let me play more Splatoon. Nintendo? They are. Two weeks. We'll review it. Don't worry about it. But what I want you to worry about is the fact that you get to like, comment, or subscribe. Take care of that now. But I'm gonna get out of here. And I'll let you do it in peace. I trust you. Don't break my trust. Talk to you later.